Hey viewers, my name is Kara. I'm your host for Tuesdays here on The Pagan Perspective, and this week we're doing another throwback topic from the early years of the collab. We talked about the role of the moon and the sun in our path and in our practice, and so this week we're talking about the moon and the sun and the other stars and planets and other celestial bodies. What role did the celestial bodies play in our path and practice, if any? What do we think about their role in paganism in general or just about our path in particular? So the topic is the moon and the sun and the stars and the planets all together. Before I begin that, last week we talked about book reviews and I did a little book review of this fiction book that has some tarot themes involved, the book of speculation. After that video, so in the past week, over the weekend, I received my pre-ordered copy of Thorn Mooney's new book, Traditional Wicca, A Seeker's Guide. So I know the book review was last week, or that was before I got this. I would have recommended it anyway, obviously. I pre-ordered it. But I have started reading it now, and it honestly is fantastic. In case you had not already heard about it, this exists. It is out now, and you can get it on Amazon, or I believe you can also get it from Thorne's website. They have some of their own copies that they can sign for you and stuff like that. So it is thorntheWitch.com. I could be wrong about the, the availability of it there, but um, follow Thorne on Instagram and Facebook and wherever else and just look up the book. You can find it. So bonus book recommendation. I'm really excited to continue reading this. I will get through it pretty quickly, I would imagine, but I just started it today. All right, so this week, the moon and the sun and the stars and the planets, it sounds like it should be a 1920s style uh, vaudeville song in my mind, which is why I keep singing it like that. So the role of the moon and the sun in my path and my practice so years and years ago when we talked about this, we had kind of a little debate over the symbolic genders of the moon and the sun because in most cultures and in neo-paganism in general, it's thought of in one way, but then in some cultures around the world, it's the opposite. And so we had a lot of fun kind of discussing like, no, well, this is why we think this one connects to the idea of the masculine and this one connects to the idea of the feminine. And as time goes by and a lot of us are moving away from more gendered terms, you know, we recognize that masculine and feminine, when we're talking about energy, we're not necessarily talking about two X chromosomes and X and Y chromosome, right? Like we're not talking about biological sex when we're talking about the energies that things have. Kind of like how certain languages, not English, have genders for inanimate objects. Like in French, so I took French in high school. So when you say the thing, whatever it is, the chair, the wall, the book, whatever, the words for the have a masculine and a feminine form. So you have to learn whether book is masculine or feminine, whether chair is masculine or feminine. And we were always having debates in French class about like, why is this word, why is this a feminine word and why is this a masculine word? Like it makes no sense, right? So when we recognize that we're not just talking about boys and girls, like men and women, right? Masculine and feminine is something beyond that. So for those of us who have started to move away from more gendered speech, we don't even say masculine and feminine very much anymore because we know that to a lot of people that in their mind, they think masculine, men, XY chromosomes, feminine, women, 2X chromosomes, right? And like the associated biological physical parts that we have that are related to that, which is not what we mean. So we might instead talk about yin and yang, which essentially means the same thing, but is not those words themselves. Or we might talk about active and passive. We might talk about receptive energies and projective energies. 
So the elements, for example, like air and fire are projective. Their symbols are the triangles that point upward and the one has the, the line through it. There we go. I can do this. Um, and then the receptive are the water and earth. How did I do that? There we go. Water and earth are the receptive feminine energies. So we might use other words. So that is one change, I suppose, that they've made throughout the years, uh, the moon and the sun in my practice. I, I do associate the sun with masculine, with yang, projective, active, direction, um, outgoing, uh, extroversion, stuff like that. And I associate the moon with the feminine, which is the receptive, the inward, the introverted, the um, oh, I can't think of the word. Anyway, I think of them in those terms, that the sun is more the outer stuff, the expanding and expressing into the world, and the moon is more the impressing and the inner work. That's the main there's another word that I keep, it's like right on the tip of my tongue, but I can't get it. Whatever. If I think of it later, I'll say it. But anyway, that's the basic, um, the sun and the moon. But they're, that's how I think of their energies. Their role in my path and my practice is that I do follow timing uh, of the sun and the moon, or I follow the cycles of the sun and the moon, we could say, because I celebrate the seasons and the changing of the seasons in the solar year. So those are determined based on where the sun is relevant to or relative to my place on the planet Earth. So I celebrate the solstices and the equinoxes pretty much as my major Sabbaths, even though they're technically not the major ones. In my path, they are the more... They're the more noticeable ones for me, except for Samhain, which is a big one because it's always been my favorite holiday, even before I consciously knew or consciously decided to be on the path of a witch. I always loved Halloween, so Samhain and the ancestors and everything like that is very important to my path as well as far as the solar calendar goes. But I follow the solar wheel of the year, as we call it, and I also... I dip in and out of kind of both of these, right? So there might be like a year that I skip celebrating Lamas and maybe the next year I skip celebrating Imolk. And I usually, I don't know if there's been a year yet where I've celebrated all eight in the same cycle. And so similarly with the lunar calendar, I follow the moon cycles, but I definitely don't end up hitting every single full moon and every single dark moon. I dip in and out of how important those cycles are to me at any given moment. But as I've talked about before in my recent video on here about how we go from studying to practicing, I think I talked about how it's kind of an ongoing thing and sometimes I will think like, oh, I don't realize what moon phase it is right now, which means I haven't been paying attention to it. Okay, so then I'll get back into it. As far as the stars and the planets go, I am into astrology. I am a person who likes astrology. And lately, in the past year or so, I'll say, I've been doing a lot more research into astronomy, like the scientific aspect of it, and then taking those facts and figures that we know about the stars and the planets in our solar system and incorporating that back into my knowledge of how astrology basically works and how magic and energy basically work and taking that information from astronomy and making it informative for my magical practice. So I do like astrology. I do like astronomy. I have gotten more into it again in this past year. So again, it's like something I've dipped in and out of. I was really into it as a kid. 
I've always felt very connected to my sun sign, which is Leo. I felt like it made a lot of sense. But there were some things that didn't make sense to me. Uh, like in palmistry, you have different elements. And I was like, well, I'm fire and everything about me is fire. And like, yeah, fire. So cool. Um, but then like my palms are not, like my hands is not a fire hand in palmistry, if you know anything about that, then you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to get into it right now. But I was like, what? This makes no sense. Uh, and then years later, when I found out about moon signs, that made more sense to me because my moon sign is an air sign and my ascendant sign is a water sign. And so just kind of making that realm of knowledge bigger and deeper for me. It was really cool, and I really enjoy it. I just think all of that stuff is super cool, so I just I like learning more about it. So in the past year, yeah, I've been doing a lot more with astronomy and astrology, and that is also because I am in my Saturn return, my very first Saturn return. I am coming up on 28 years of age this year, so I am ever more closely approaching, um, Saturn has returned into the sign of Capricorn, which is the sign that my Saturn, that Saturn is in, in my birth chart, my Saturn. It's not like there's multiple Saturns, but you know what I mean. Saturn is in Capricorn in my birth chart. So Saturn has returned into the sign of Capricorn for the first time during my, this current lifetime. We'll be talking about reincarnation and other lifetimes later this month. Spoilers. Uh, so I won't get into that yet, but during this lifetime, Saturn has just returned into the sign. So I was doing a Saturn Returns course last year. I did a couple iterations of it. So there's a handful of people who went through that course with me, and I will be offering it again later this year. It's going through a revamp of things that I have learned from the first two times doing it bringing it together, deciding what we can do away with and what I really want to keep and what I want to expand and do more with. But yeah, so my relationship with Saturn has really deepened over the past year or two years especially because I've really been feeling the effects of Saturn Returns type stuff for a handful of years and making a lot of big changes in my life and all of these things that kind of can happen with Saturn. So reading more about Saturn. Uh, there's a bunch of articles now, in case you haven't seen it pop up at all, that scientists have found that one of Saturn's moons, I don't know for sure how to pronounce it, but it's something like Enceladus. It's E-N-C-E-L-A-D-U-S. Enceladus. I think I got that right. Um, that they have found that the water on that moon is capable of sustaining life, essentially. Like, there's no proof that they have, there's, you know, they're not saying we found life on this moon. Like, no, that's, that's not it. <laughs> um, but there have been several articles about how they're, they're testing it and have found evidence of, like, bioorganisms and stuff like that. And so that's pretty cool. So I get, I get a lot of articles, like, from space.com and, anywhere else that's talking about Saturn and astronomy, I get a lot of those recommended articles because of the research that I do about Saturn um, to use that in my Saturn Returns work, which is really cool. So I, I sometimes get annoyed with recommended articles and stuff like that online and on my new phone. It has that feature like on my Google homepage tab. Sometimes I get annoyed with it because it's like stuff I don't care about. It's just like national news or something. But I do really like that it gives me, like, news about Saturn. So it's like, hey, did you know this about Saturn's moon? Scientists are finding stuff out because this is, you know, it's cool. So here you go. That's awesome. So, yeah, that's stuff that I really like to read about and learn about. Um, so I think Saturn is the other planet in this solar system that I have the closest connection to that has the most... Um, active role in my path currently because of where I am in my life right now. And I also pay attention somewhat to how the planet Mars relates to me 
because I make videos on Tuesdays here on Pagan Perspective, and that was a topic that I suggested a while ago. I said, let's talk about how we relate to the energy of the planet that our day of the week that we post on got its name from. So I post on Tuesdays, which again, I took French. So in French is Mardi because it is named after Mars. And there's obviously a bunch of other gods from different pantheons who the names of the week are actually from the Anglo-Saxon pantheon. So it would be the goddess Tu for Tuesday. But it's connected to the planet Mars. And so I've paid attention to that throughout the years, just thinking about, like, how is Tuesday energy my energy, and how does that relate to my life? Because I've been making videos on Tuesdays for the Pagan Perspective for very near a decade now, and, like, so that's kind of a big deal. It's like, I've got a lot of Tuesday energy, Tuesday energy going on, um, but I definitely have a bigger connection to Saturn right now, at least. And, of course, as a kid, I was a big Sailor Moon fan. Shout outs to the Sailor Scouts. And so, um, like, my cousins were really into it. And my one cousin, uh, I guess it's like, we didn't cosplay back then, but it's what cosplay basically is, where you would just be like, I'm this person, and I'm this person, and you would role play, right? So we would, like, go out in the yard and play Sailor Scouts. And my one cousin was Sailor Jupiter, and her sister was Sailor Moon, and they always made me Rini because I was the little one. So I loved Rini as a kid, and I used to wear my hair in pigtails and everything like that. But now I think I would want to be Sailor Saturn because she's a badass, and my favorite color is purple. And I always loved Luna P as well. I always loved Pluto. But yeah, I want to get I want to get a black cat and name it Luna, and a white cat and name it Artemis. Life goals. So yeah, that's essentially the uh, the role that the moon and the sun and the stars and the planets play in my path and in my practice today. If you miss my face and you like seeing my face and you want to support me, I have not been posting stuff on my personal channel for the past couple months, but I have been here on Pagan Perspective, and I have also still been making exclusive content for my Patreon sponsors at patreon.com slash cutewitch772. So if you want to sponsor my videos for my personal channel when I start making them again in advance, you can go ahead and sponsor me on Patreon now, and I am still doing exclusive content for my sponsors there and I'm going to be revamping the rewards very soon so like don't get super attached to what it says the rewards are right now because they're probably going to get updated soon when I have the motivation to update it but for right now everything's there and check out Thorn Mooney's book this is not sponsored I just really love Thorn and I really love this book Traditional Wicca A Seeker's Guide just came out this month it's a brand new book it's a brand new book and the praise on the cover is from our late great uncle Raymond Buckland which I noticed and shed a tear miss you uncle Ray so I will see you guys next week until then don't forget to be awesome blessed be and goodbye